Okay, you new guys out there wondering how to carbonate your beer, I wanna show you how to do this in a keg in just a few minutes. I discovered this by trial and error, and I thought it'd be really useful for people who aren't sure how to go about doing this. So I have an IPA in here that has been cold crashed for several days, and that is gonna make a bunch of the sediment in there settle to the bottom. Before I carbonate this and agitate it, all I'm gonna do is hook it up and put a little pressure on it and then pour off the first dregs that are at the bottom. So here we go. I'm just gonna pour off. See, the line is full of sanitizer from that keg over there. All right. I mean, that of course is not clear but it's got a bunch of dregs. All right, so I'm gonna pour this out outside and we'll do it again just to be sure. There's still some sediment in there, but you know, I would drink it, especially this stuff, man. This is incredible. On the next video, I'm gonna review this for you. It's fantastic. This is a mango IPA, no mangoes. There's no fruit, there's nothing but hops to give it the flavor, and it is fantastic. Mango, tropical fruit, I was aiming for that, but what surprised me was peach. It's got peach flavor in it. Now, here are the steps. First, I'm gonna disconnect this. I'm gonna take this out. You can do this in the kegerator if you want. I prefer to do it out here where I have more room and I'm always worried I might crack the bottom because we're gonna agitate this thing. This is my high pressure line. I've got it set for about 30 pounds. Put it on the end. You hear that? That's the regulator allowing some of this gas through into the container. Now, I want you to notice that when I start agitating this, you're gonna hear that sound again from the regulator because what's happening is as I agitate it, the carbon dioxide that's under pressure in the headspace of the keg is being absorbed into the cold liquid inside. By the way, I've got the kegerator set at um, 30 degrees and it's 31 in the bottom, but I don't have a fan in there and so you know it warms up as you get to the top. When I set this one at 30, I get no frozen lines and a good cold beer. So that works for me, yours might be a little different, but basically I think you wanna to try to get about 34, 36 degrees, and that makes it easier to carbonate it. So I'm gonna set a timer here. We're gonna do this for four minutes, which is a lot longer than it seems if you're shaking something, all right? So here we go. and you can hear that CO2 flowing through the regulator. Before I agitate it, I run off some of the dregs because I don't wanna stir them back up in here and then have to wait hours to drink it. So I'm stirring it up and I'm gonna be able to taste this right away. Okay, this is the cameraman doing it. This will give you a workout, man. You might take a break and then, you know, break it up into two, two minute sessions. Well, it's just about four minutes. I disconnect it from a high pressure line. Four minutes of shaking that. Give you a workout. And here's out. That's too much pressure as I pour some off. Pressure's gonna go down. See, I'm shaking. Still a little flat. Could be that that's uh, what was in the line and was flat, so I'm gonna throw this out. No, I'm not. Okay, that's more like it. I'm gonna let some of this pressure out. I got 30 pounds in there and I wanna get it down to serving pressure. 
of about 10 pounds, could be even less. Mmm. I think that's about right. I might have the pressure still a little high because look at all that head. But the carbonation level I think is about right. This tap line is made for less carbonated beers. This is my long tap line for highly carbonated beers. This one is 12 feet long and this one's only six feet long. If I connect this to this, it's gonna come out less foamy because the longer tap line provides resistance during the push to keep the carbonation in solution. But the purpose of this exercise was to see if I could get this carbonated to the right level in about four minutes. I believe it is. Basically, you can get it almost exactly where you want it in four minutes of shaking if your keg is at cold. I just remember 30-30. 30 degrees, 30 pounds of pressure, four minutes of agitating. Wow. Well, it's not even lunchtime yet, so I'm going to not finish this because I've got work to do. We'll talk more about this Musculange IPA in the next video because I'm going to review it for you. This, is, this one's older. This is from uh, July. Brew day for this one was about, uh, well, 28 days ago. I'll compare the two. I'm going to share the recipe with you and all my techniques and everything. I'm going to tell you all my secrets about how I made this because I want you to make it and enjoy it at home. There's no way I can sell it. I don't have, you know, I don't have a license. For some reason, there's people out there who think that I've got to get permission from them to sell my beer. And so I comply with that kind of stuff to keep myself out of jail because I've got a family I have to take care of. I don't think it's anybody's business what I sell to whom. But that said, I can't sell this to you. You're going to have to make it yourself. And I'm happy to share the recipe and the techniques but I'll tell you all about that next time.